Hello there everyone, this is me Ryan from Tokyo, Japan here with the Ghost Letters Report. Now, big news this week, I think everyone's aware of it by now, but first time I've had a chance to sit down to a video, but um, Kim Jong-il, the dear leader of North Korea, is dead. Now, after several years of struggling with health and um, clearly showing the signs of his body deteriorating, yeah, this gentleman's finally died. And we've seen this almost morbid reaction in North Korea that I've never witnessed before. Um, I wasn't that heavily involved in politics when his uh, father, Kim Jong Son, I believe, yeah, when he died. Uh, a similar thing happened. I went back and found some this little bit of video that's out there available to see the first time this went down in North Korea. And it's pretty much the same thing. Although this time it seems to be a little bit um, less, because this is the uh, son, not the uh, original founder. And when this guy died, Kim Jong Il, many countries kind of overreacted. Really, in my mind, big time. They overreacted to his death. They act like North Korea is now extremely. Uh, politically unstable and I might do something crazy nobody knows and a lot of this stuff right and from you know even them several of the world's major stock markets had a plunge a slight plunge due to this death because people are so worried about what's going to happen in Asia Really, yeah, I'm surprised by this. This overreaction of everyone having because Kim Jong Il died. Obviously, if you stop and think about it, the North Korean leadership has obviously been preparing for this for several years. I mean, they're not foolish. They know that Kim Jong Il's health was weakening, and he didn't have a lot of years left. It's really clear what they should have been doing. And any government that wants to maintain itself and survive is going to prepare for, for a charismatic leader dying and having to replace him somehow. So, you know, everyone overreacting about this. It really is kind of nuts. North Korea is not going to use this as an opportunity to attack anyone or do anything that would really upset the balance of power in Asia. They're not in that type of political position. They don't have that type of political influence. This nation is basically isolated geopolitically. You look at where they stand, they don't have a lot of allies. Even amongst communist nations, they don't have a lot of allies. Um, Vietnam is a limited trade partner. China treats North Korea as basically a client state and gives them a, just enough political influence to keep themselves out of hot water. They don't get too much financial aid from China. China treats them like a client state, kind of, so they can have more influence in that part of Asia. America if you think the US government is extremely concerned about North Korea right now, not really. They got their hands full in the Middle East and the election cycle for president has just started to kick up. So Obama is, you know, really going to avoid getting too heavily involved with North Korea because they'll have to deal with China, but then you got South Korea to deal with. You know, they don't want to get involved. And Korea, North Korea is aware of this. They know the South is watching them every day. They know China slaps them on the butt sometimes like a child. And they know that America is not extremely concerned. And even Japan, you know, we've seen a strong reaction here in Japan to it. Japan should really have nothing to be concerned about. The North is not going to do anything insane to Japan right now. So all of this is just paranoia because North Korea is a very 
culturally isolated place. They, they don't let people in. They don't let people out. Only way you're going to get in is if you're going on one of those special government tour packages, which are a little complicated to get, but you can pay the money and get one. Or if you're a diplomat or a journalist. That's the only way you're getting in there. And people worry about that because North Korean government doesn't, they're not very transparent to the rest of the world. They're barely cooperative. And they have the reasons for that. Right now, North Korea's main concern is accession of power. Who's coming in after Kim Jong-il? That's pretty obvious. They've already announced that they already made enough cues about it. It's going to be Kim Jong-il's son, Kim Jong-un, I believe. A very young man, somewhere between the ages of 27 and 30. No real experience internationally and not a lot of experience, no experience militarily. But since he's the chosen one, he got tapped by his, by his father. He's going to um, take over the reins as the uh, leader. Now, what it appears here is that for the first time, North Korea may change the way they do things. I don't think that they can rely on this uh, one leader making all the decisions anymore. It appears from things I've read, in it, you know, the position that North Korea is of their political structure at the moment. They're probably going to go to something like Cuba has, which they have a committee, or they may move to something similar to Vietnam has, which is a Politburo. China has something similar. So that's really going to be their only two choices here when I finally resettle their government and they go to make changes here and there to their constitution or government structure. They're going to have to go to rule by committee because the chosen one to uh, replace Kim Jong-il, this kid doesn't have enough experience. There's no way he could lead that country on his own. So he's going to need a lot of help. It'll probably come from his, uh, I think, uncle or something similar to that. He was the head of the military. Probably going to step in and guide the guy through with several other experienced members in the, in the, um, in the party, the Communist Party of North Korea. <coughs> Pardon me there. So that's going to be that is their main concern right now. Absolutely. They're not at all looking to start any trouble right now. they got to figure out how they're going to run their government in a slightly modified fashion from what they've come accustomed to. You have a lot of elder leadership in that party, a lot of elder leadership within their government structure, so there's no way in hell they're going to let that boy go on his own and let him have at it. That would be just ludicrous and really stupid and unwise politically. They're going to end up with some type of rule by committee, the way Cuba does it, or a Politburo similar to, like I said, Vietnam or China. So the rest of the world, you guys need to relax, okay? Kim, on, Kim Jong-il is dead. And World War III did not start. All right? So I think everyone just, everyone just needs to relax and just remind yourself of the unique position North Korea is in, what North Korea says they can do and what they're actually going to do, has historically proven to be two different things. So really, don't worry about the North Korea. They're really a non-issue politically. Really. Uh, you know, they're just worrying about getting their government stable and having their cultural mourning, which I find to be morbid, like I said earlier. And amazing to watch, and it's just a cultural insight into, uh, into their culture and their country to watch these things. So sit back. Enjoy the theatrics of North Korea. And on December 28th or 29th, that's when they're going to have the big show, the official burial, the official goodbye of Kim Jong-il. So that'll be much more interesting to watch and much more intriguing than worry about the North doing something nuts in the next month, month and a half while they restructure everything and get things stable so they can present their new leader to the world and to the North Korean people. So guys, just relax. Just relax, you know? The North will be fine. You'll be fine. I'll be fine. 
everyone will be just fine, you know. Because I've been watching this whole thing play out this week. And I've been watching everyone's reactions to it. Some people totally freaking out, which a lot of countries here in East Asia and Southeast Asia, they're all paranoid and worried. But have you noticed, China, not a word. China's been very level-headed and cool about it and hasn't mentioned much about it at all. They've just, they announced themselves, Kim Jong-il died. We're sorry to hear that. Okay. So in all the other countries are freaking out and China's just like, yeah, yeah. The North will be fine. We know them much better than you do and we have a much closer relationship with them than you do. They're not going to, no. You know, China's being very cool about it. They're just letting things go the way they should. That's what the rest of us should do. Let the North do what the North's going to do. You know, and all these other nations have seen this before. They've seen North Korea go through a leadership change. You should know how they're going to do it. They're not that much of an unpredictable country. That's just the image that a lot of world powers like to put on North Korea to make them appear more dangerous than they really are. Just a little... It's a poor little communist nation, guys, okay? Remember that. It's a poor little communist nation. They're not going to push themselves. It's funny, you know, how a lot of governments and in, 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 in invested bodies really believe a lot of the uh, propaganda North Korea produces. And, and then, yeah, yeah, I know. People's first reaction is, no, I don't, no, none of our government leaders are susceptible to uh, communist propaganda from North Korea. You think so? North Korea says, you know, we will crush the South, South Korea. I say this constantly. And everyone believes them. They don't have the capability to do that. They don't have the resources to sustain such a war by themselves. They don't have the technology to do that. Yeah, they have a huge army, one of the hugest ground forces in the world. And they have so many mortar rockets and missiles and things. Yeah, and that could do a lot of damage. But not the kind of damage you think they could do. When you think about it, the North can only stand on its own now. I'm not talking about other foreign governments getting involved. Just If it was just North and South, the first couple of days would be pure hell, and you'd see massive death. But after about a week, it'd be pretty clear the North couldn't hold their own, and they'd have to have backup. And of course, America is going to be right on South Korea's side, the most powerful military in the world. And then you have China with their alliance, military alliance with the North. No, guys. The North is not going to be attacking anybody anytime soon. Alright, so, to sum this video up, guys, Kim Jong-il is dead, and who cares? Alright? Don't worry about him. They are not, the country is not going to do anything. They're worried about restructuring the government and uh, with uh, accession of power. China's not seem to be outly worried about it. America not, doesn't seem to be outly worried about it. Even Russia doesn't seem to be outly worried about it. The only countries really making a big stink about it are country here and countries here in East Asia and Southeast Asia. There's really a border at that nation, and they're just paranoid. Okay, so don't give in on all this paranoia. Yeah. That's about it for me right now. <laughs> here in the uh, Ghost Letters Report, as always, thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please comment in the comment box below, and please subscribe. Until next time, guys, this is me, Ryan. Check it out.